Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptomancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, I wanted to revisit Waka Spear Blade. So, no matter what you think of the card, or if you've purchased him, or if you've passed, or if you had no chance at him, he's definitely an intriguing topic in Splinterlands. And tomorrow, we just got word from Homestead that they're going to release the go live of patches tomorrow. And after the patches come into place on April 5th, um, they're going to also release Waka Spirit Blade in from uh, Atomic Hub on Wax into the game. And all of those cards are gonna be available for sale for $1,500 from Splinterlands. Um, and anything that's still left there will be burned after one week. And I think as of last count, I don't know the official number that was on Atomic Hub, but I think only like less than 30 might have been sold on Atomic Hub. So it's probably like around 470 or so, maybe. I don't have the exact number, so don't quote me on that. But there might be 470 copies of Waka Spirit Blade in the uh, Splinterlands marketplace here tomorrow for $1,500. And let's evaluate that for a second. So if we look at Waka right now, there's actually four Wakas on the market here. Uh, one as cheap as $1,290 that are sitting there. I don't know if these are going to sell, but for the last, um, well, for the longest period of time that I can remember, there's been several Wakas always on the market for under $1,500. So what's interesting here is that if all 400 and let's say 70 of those come into the market, and in one week, no one scoops them up. This is an interesting thing because the circulation of these regular foil wakas will potentially go down from 960 to under 500, uh, perhaps. We'll have to see the final numbers. But that's a big deal. Uh, that's a half of wakas being burned. Um, if no one steps up and buys a lot of wakas, which honestly I don't see uh, necessarily happening given the market for Waka currently. So uh, if you're a Waka owner, you may be in some rarefied air there because there may not be very many Waka owners out there. So here comes the next question and the next topic that I want to talk about. If after the Waka sale, let's say there's less than 500 Wakas in Splinterlands game itself, well, you have a pretty rare card, a legendary summoner at three mana. Well, what does that mean if you never use him or if he's not valuable to users at, let's say, the uh, diamond or champion level? Because that, that's really where this card is targeted because it's a max level card. You know, you're not going to pay $1,500 for a, ma a max level summoner and play in silver, bronze, or probably gold. So your target audience as Splinterlands is diamond or, gold, or diamond or champion players, but if the card's not meta, not useful, no one wants to buy it. You have 500 copies of basically a paperweight, a digital paperweight, right? So let's take a look at some interesting pieces that I want to kind of uh, maybe pique your interest or just talk about some possible scenarios. So if we look at these summoners here for death, right? These are the death summoners that are available to us. Um, from a legendary perspective, We've got Mimosa and Cryptmancer, and Waka Spirit Blade in its current form is not gonna compete with those legendary summoners for value. Now, if we go back down to, let's say, three mana summoners, um, Waka is probably most similar to, probably in value, realistically, like Ouster, I would say, is reasonable. Magic Reflect is situational, but when used in the right situation is very powerful. I think Waka with Poison, if used with the right team, with the right mana, you know, can be also very powerful, but it's not, you know, in every uh, battle play, like possibly like a summoner like Kitty or Yoden, right? So if we look at Ouster, what is a max level Ouster selling for? Well, right now, a max level Ouster is selling for $525, um, which is obviously a lot less than $1,500. So, from a Splinterlands perspective, there's a little bit of a gap there in value and in utility. So what Splinterlands, uh, the dev team has said in the past is that, hey, 
we're not going to nerf cards, right? If we make something too powerful, we're just trying to rebalance the game and make counters that you can play against those really powerful cards. But they've never said, as far as I know, that they wouldn't try and buff a card that was underpowered. And I think we can all say, probably with a straight face, that the Waka Spirit Blade promo was not great for maybe the game, for bringing new players in. Certainly at this point, not for those that spent over $1,700 on the card uh, originally. So what could Splinterlands do here? Well, they could say, well, tough luck for all you people that spent almost $2,000 on a promo card that we were hyped about, and you know, better luck next time. I'm guessing Splinterlands probably doesn't want to do that. They probably think, hey, you know, these, these people that sold out and bought this card in less than 40 seconds probably deserve to have a card that's worth at least $1,700 in the game. And what could they do? Well, they could do nothing, like I said, and I probably think that's something they maybe don't want to do over time if this becomes kind of an eyesore in the promo area. Um, what they could do is this, right? So one of the things with playing with Waka that um, I've noticed is that Poison is obviously a great ability. You know, anytime, like if you were able to get Poison on any of the cards in your collection at any point in time, you'd take it because it's a very good offensive ability, all things uh, being equal. The problem for me personally, what I've seen with using Waka is what one, you know, my death team is very underpowered. You can see here from a playable perspective, I don't have a great death team at, at all, really. And if you even narrow it down to Chaos Legion and Untamed cards, um, death is very good, very, very good. Uh, probably the strongest splinter at bronze and silver, some could say, right? Straight out of the box using just the basic cards, especially if you're a bot, you love death in bronze and silver. But that being said, these cards don't necessarily work well with Waka because the two thing, well, the one thing you definitely need with Waka or any type of damage over time effect like poison is you need survivability. Right? You, first thing you need is survivability. So you need to be able to stick around long enough for the poison to get applied and do its damage so that you win the match uh, with that amplification of damage that you get through the poison. Secondly, you need to be able to disperse the poison uh, or damage over time effect to more than one unit on the board. Ideally three, but at least two per turn. And if you're having a 50% application rate you either need multiple attacks or you need to kind of spread at least uh, attacks to three different units every turn. So with this current in the modern league with death, one, there's not a lot of survivability here. Um, two, there's not a great way to spread damage over multiple targets or uh, do that and survive with these cards. So what could Splinterlands do to amp up Waka and do so relatively easy from a game mechanic perspective? Well, here is a proposal worth considering that instantly they could flip a switch, make Waka viable in the meta and not affect anything in the game other than Waka. And what they could do is they could make Blast uh, damage effectively allow for poison to uh, be applied from the summoner ability. Meaning right now the way the game works is when you hit a target with blast, poison the poison effect is not applied to any other uh, targets that are hit by the blast. It's only the original target that gets affected. But what if Splinterlands changed the blast mechanic to say that if the monster or the summoner that um, you are using has poison, that blast could, uh, the damage units would also be, have a 50% chance to be poisoned. Um, that could be an interesting effect um, at its base because now with blast units, you could actually spread the poison more effectively on the death team. 
And this type of behavior in game mechanics is not unheard of. In fact, Life Leech right now, if you were to use, for example, a Venari Bonesmith on the death team with Life Leech in a blast or explosive weaponry scenario, anytime his blast damage um, damages uh, adjacent units with the blast, he gets to take advantage of that Life Leech and his health. Same thing with Life Sapper, Ancient Lich, and other units like the Stitch Leech and others if there's an explosive weaponry type scenario across the Splinter. So it's definitely not unheard of for this type of mechanic to exist uh, with other abilities. And we can take a look here at the Life Leech uh, ability description here basically. I think this is unofficial, but the monster's health increases each time it damages an enemy. Monster's health in proportion to the damage dealt works with blast, right? So all we're saying is to change the poison uh, to also work with blast because poison right now attacks have a chance 50% to apply poison, which does automatic damage to the target, right? So uh, it's a very simple change of game mechanics, but could be uh, important here as we look at making Waka great. And you might be saying, oh, wait, hold, hold up, hold up, this is crazy. You can't have Blast spreading poison because that would be OP. Well, let's take a step back and look at the current cards that are available to uh, Waka and the Death Team here that have Blast. You have Nightmare in the Modern League, in, as the only death card in modern that, modern that has Blast, and you have Grenadier, is only neutral, that has Blast. And these are both at the, obviously, um, gold or diamond levels. So two cards in modern that could be used uh, in this type of meta shift. And then you have, in the wild format, you would have the Gremlin Blaster in neutral, and the Screaming Banshee in uh, wild as well. So a total of four cards could take advantage of this change, but the change could be significant in that all of a sudden you could have meta teams that would make Waka more viable using you know, a combination of possibly these four cards. Now you may be thinking, well, if this proposed change were to go into effect, then this would totally imbalance the game because all of the monsters with blast and poison out there in the Splinter verse would suddenly become super powerful. Well, I mean, not necessarily. One is there's no monster that has both blast and poison combined as an ability in the game today. There is no other summoner that provides poison in the game besides Waka. However, there is a summoner that's legendary, just happens to be, that has the blast ability. So that is Yoden. So what does this mean for the game? Well, it would mean that with Yoden, now units that have poison with Yoden also become more powerful. What are those units? Well, it's also quite limited. From a fire perspective, the lava spider has poison at diamond level, and so does the serpentine spy, as well as serpent of the flame. So those are three units in the fire team under Yoden that would become more powerful with this change. From a neutral perspective, uh, monsters that would also be more effective with Yoden would be a Horny Toad with Reach, Uraeus with Sneak, and Dr. Blight. So those are three more cards. So a total of six cards outside of Waka and the Death Team would get a meta bump with Yoden. Uh, and you know, Yoden is, well, good news, a legendary summoner, also very expensive, would also increase his value. And if you actually look at Yoden right now, kind of interesting. I don't know if anyone's been following the market, but the price of Yoden um, has come down quite a bit. Um, it's under $400. Uh, it's ranging between, let's say, $385 and like $350 right now in the current market. And you're like, wow, that's really expensive. Well, yeah, it's definitely still very expensive, but this is a legendary uh, seven mana cost summoner with only uh, less than 2,000 total uh, copies in circulation. And this card was selling for, just at the beginning of the year, almost $800. So its value has come down quite a bit. So is it a terrible thing that another legendary summoner might be slightly buffed by this change? Possibly but it's not like this is a common summoner either that we're talking about here. 
So it does you know, open up a little bit of a slippery slope when you start buffing game mechanics and cards. It's not something that generally you want to do, um, but as an exception, uh, this type of change may not be all that game breaking. And it could be something that maybe through just general chatter on the town halls or through the feedback system that we as a community say, hey, this is something that should be looked at. So Splinterlands could make this change for the Blast rule set, allowing the exception for poison to be applied uh, through Blast as a mechanic. And basically, they could introduce a reward card or a future card in, in the, the future that could be maybe neutral or death that has Blast and Poison on it that could be also very valuable. So with this change, uh, they could very easily make Waka valuable, make Waka desirable, get his value in the market in the meta to where it probably should be, and it wouldn't really uh, take much coding uh, or testing to make that happen realistically uh, very little effort and the problem with Waka may be solvable. So can we make Waka great for the first time? Yes, we can, uh, perhaps, let's see. So is the Waka sale from Wax and Atomic Hub going to go well or will we have Waka burned uh, from a card perspective down to under 500 copies? And is there a way to make Waka strong, powerful and worth the cost that many put into him originally with their faith, with their SPS, and with their vouchers. Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, keep stacking those stats.